Hey, it's Maximo and welcome to Maximo's Travels. I'm in Osaka and in this video we go to Namba's Lion Head Shrine. I wander around the very impressive Osaka Yumeda Station. We check out the sweeping views and stunning architecture of the Yumeda Sky Building. I have more fabulous sushi food at a sushi train restaurant and go to a specialty vegan and gluten free restaurant and I get to check out Namba's nightlife. So join me. It's day two in Osaka and we decide to take a walk to the Namba Yashaka Shrine. This is about 1.2 kilometers and 18 to 20 minutes walking from our hotel. It's a nice easy walk and we get to walk through Namba Station until we get to the shrine which is located in a residential area. You walk through the Tori gates at the front entrance and you're greeted with well a spectacular site and an Osaka landmark. The shrine complex comprises a couple of buildings foremost of which is a temple in the shape of a huge lion's head. The lion's head is 12 meters tall and 11 meters wide and it's basically a, a building that has a shrine at the center of it. It is very very unique. It's also surrounded by a whole heap of uh, cherry trees and in spring they blossom so it would be a magical place to come in the springtime. The temple complex wasn't that large and it only took us 10 or so minutes to have a wander around and soak in the sights. At this stage we decided to split up. I wanted to go and see a high tower and Joe wanted to go to some uh, shopping areas to have a look at some craft shops. So I headed towards Osaka station and my destination which was the Yumida Sky Building. The Sky Building was around 6 kilometers away from the shrine and it took about 30 odd minutes via the Osaka Metro line to get there. You get fantastic views of the Sky Building from Osaka Station. I'll be exploring Osaka Station in further detail later on in this video. Once you get to Osaka Yumida Station it is a 10 or so minute walk to the Yumida Sky Building. At the moment there's a lot of construction happening so it's somewhat little bit uh, difficult to get to but the route is uh, reasonably well signposted. Along the way you get to see a number of different attractions including a waterfall and some statues. Also get a magnificent view of Osaka Station. The Yamida Sky Building comprises of two separate buildings both 40 stories high. Both the towers are around about 173 meters tall and they're connected in the upper two most uh, stories of the building with a sky observation deck. This connects the two separate towers together and enables a fairly big observation deck both outdoor and indoor to be featured right between the two buildings. The observation deck is open from 9.30 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. every day and it's slightly difficult to get to. Basically you walk through the uh, foyer of one of the buildings and head towards the escalators to level 3. Basically you head down a long long corridor until you get to a bank of elevators um, in the distance. Once you're at the elevators you take a quite spectacular lift up to the 39th floor. <laughs> when you get to the top of the elevator there's a mid-air escalator that is truly truly stunning and certainly not for the faint of heart if you've got issues with heights.
that escalator was an equal parts stunning, fascinating, stupendous and terrifying. All this part is still free. You get to uh, the ticket office which is located on the 39th floor and buy your tickets to get you access to the two observation decks. One inside and one on the roof outside. The cost of admission is 1500 yen. This is around about 16 or so Australian dollars. This is quite reasonable when you consider I went to the Sydney Tower a few months later and it cost 38 Australian dollars, so a fair bit more expensive. I started off looking around the interior of the 39th floor. I was surprised to find a theatre and some art displays here but wasn't surprised about the fabulous 360 degree views of Osaka and Osaka Bay and its city's surrounds. You also get a fantastic view of the sky deck and the observation tower that's on top of the building. It is truly unique and marvellous architecture. After taking heaps of videos and photos, I proceeded to the skywalk. This is the top level of the observation deck and it's also open air. I proceeded up the stairs and was eager to check out the view. I was fortunate that it was a warm, sunny day with fabulous visibility. It also wasn't very crowded and there was no issues about getting a ticket for this attraction on the day. It was a little bit windy up there, but it was Ooh, nice and warm. So the views were absolutely spectacular. I'll let you have a look. That was hot, windy and great. I went downstairs and continued to look around the uh, lower level of the observation deck. This is a great spot to admire the complexity and splendour of the architecture of this building. And thankfully it was air conditioned so it was a chance to cool down and catch my breath. I was a little bit peckish and uh, a bit dehydrated so I headed over to the snack bar and ordered myself uh, a couple of things. There did seem to be quite a wide selection of food and drinks available here and the prices were reasonable. I ordered an iced coffee and a matcha ice cream. Being suitably refreshed, I decided to head back over to Osaka Station, down that scary escalator and the glass elevator. I explored the very large Osaka train station and looked for somewhere to get a bite to eat for lunch. While this station isn't as large as Kyoto Station, it was quite impressive in and of itself. I rode a series of high long escalators all the way up to a covered plaza at the top of the station building. There was a couple of cafes here and a number of other food vendors and a fair bit of open space that was set up for entertainment. It also provided a fantastic vantage point to see all the trains in Osaka Station. On the roof of the station building was a small garden and observation deck. The observation deck provided absolutely fantastic views of the Amida Sky building where I'd just come from moments earlier. By this stage I was getting pretty hungry and I found a sushi revolving train restaurant towards the top of the uh, station building complex, probably around level 5 or 6. I went inside, ordered an ice cold beer and then proceeded to have a feast. The sushi here was excellent and food has been an absolute highlight on our trip to Japan. 
I finished up lunch and headed back to the hotel in Namba. I took the metro train and then walked through the streets of Namba back to the hotel and for a well-earned rest. I caught up with Joe. I got back to Namba and headed to the hotel. I caught up with Joe and we both had a bit of a rest. Later in the afternoon, we decided to go out to another vegan and gluten-free restaurant. This was a sister restaurant to the one that we went to the day before. It was equally as good, but it was even busier. I won't do a review of this restaurant here. I'll do a separate one of this one and the other one in a separate video. So please stay tuned for that one. We finished up our meal and stepped out into the Osaka early evening. There's something magical about Japanese large cities at night with all their neon signs, hustle and bustle, and the sheer number of eating places with their fabulous food smells. There's just nothing like it. This is yet another fabulous and exhausting day touring Japan. I do hope you've liked this video. If so, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. And hit that notify bell to be informed of all my future Japanese and other videos. If you'd like to support this channel, please consider buying me a coffee. Until my next video, you take care and bye now.